The tense battle of keeping or repealing Obamacare is on the minds of lawmakers and voters alike today. So let's bring in North Carolina Representative Mark Walker, who is the chairman of the Republican Study Committee, re representing upwards of 160 members in the House, and who also has just presented an alternative to the health care law. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. I appreciate it. I want to get straight uh, to our interview, if I may. Um, you know, here's a massive piece of bureaucracy, A, and B, people are accustomed to it. So if you can, in simple terms, tell us what you're presenting to not only lawmakers, but of course the American people today in repealing Obamacare. Sure. What we're trying to do is push back, Elizabeth, on the false narrative that Republicans haven't had a plan to both repeal and replace. The number one co-sponsored piece of legislation, the Americans Health Care Reform Act, was uh, gathered many signatures both in the 113th and the 114th Congress. What we did this week is we unveiled that again. Uh, it's a great plan. Uh, it does allow for pre-existing conditions, uh, extended coverage for veterans and other Americans. So this narrative that's coming from our Democrat friends that we've not had any kind of repeal or replacement plan is simply false. Okay, the Affordable Care Act, um, as you and I both know, is about 2,500 pages long. Correct me if I'm wrong, your plan is 184 pages long. So very simply, are there going to be holes? I mean, we're talking about a giant piece of legislation. You have people at home who are thinking, you know, what's going to happen to me? I I am I going to have to go and re-enroll? Is there going to be a new website for me to sure. go to? And also, are they going to be able to get, like you said, pre-existing coverage uh, and coverage that they already have in place? Elizabeth, this is what I called Wednesday at our press conference, just round one in a 15-round engagement. Uh, there are more modif modifications that are needed. Uh, this past summer, there were some solutions provided for the better way. Uh, the point is, we're not going to be yanking the rug out from Americans like we hear from our friends. And part of our goal is to put together a plan that we actually read before we pass. That's important for us, and it takes some time. Uh, you had mentioned Better Way. That's a proposal um, House Speaker Paul Ryan proposed, if I'm not mistaken. What is better about your plan than, um, forgive me for being repetitive, but the Better Way? Sure. They're, they're very similar. Uh, the big difference here uh, is the Better Way offers tax credits. The Americans Health Care Reform Act simply uses tax deductions. For example, an individual would have $7,500. A family would have up to $20,500 of deductions. Very similar, but what we're trying to do is make sure the very day the president comes over uh, to the Capitol, uh, one of the first times he's been back since trying to sell his Iranian debacle deal, that, that we're pushing through the narrative that Republicans have sat on their hands and not done anything with both the repeal and the replacement. One of the goals, if I'm not mistaken, is that you want to level the playing field. So how do you do that for people who not only have insurance through an employer and those who are looking for their own insurance? They're going on the website. And then the second thing I want to ask you along the same lines is you said that you wanted people to be able to shop across state lines, if I'm not mistaken. How does that not sure. create sort of a race to the bottom, meaning that we're going to provide the cheapest, but it may not be the best coverage for people at home? Well, the whole premise, we have to go back. Do we want to provide Americans the choice or decisions to make their own decisions regarding the health care, or do we want bureaucracies and bureaucrats in D.C. to decide that? It does include Marsha Lanston's bill to be able to purchase insurance across state line. This is Dr. Phil Rowe's original piece of legislation from Tennessee, a health care provider who employed hundreds of medical professionals who waited on thousands of patients. We have medical people, pharmacists, uh, doctors, uh, physicians that have put this bill together, not just simple bureaucrats. And that's why I think it's important uh, to get this bill across the American people. It's not the end all. It does need modifications. But this is, right. this is kind of a picture that we're batting lead off for what we need to accomplish. Okay, well, let's talk reality quickly. We don't have a ton of time left, but I think the American people know that there's, there's different factions within uh, the House of Representatives. There are certainly people who have different beliefs. How likely are we going to see a consensus with our members who are saying, listen, this is what's best for the American people? How do we know that there's not going to be gridlock in a proposal like this? Well, when, when former RSC uh, Chairman, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, came over to the House Wednesday, he's asked us to be unified. I think with the new president-elect Donald Trump coming in, uh, who have said this is a primary piece, a, a component of their complete administration, something they want to tackle with urgency, we need to align that. We need to work together. Uh, I'm not a big proponent of the budget numbers that's coming back from the Senate, but right now it's very important that we fulfill our promise to the American people. We've got to earn back the trust and credibility, and that comes with a full repeal of Obamacare. All right. Well, Representative Walker, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course, I know that you, you drove under um, some pretty treacherous conditions, so we appreciate you joining us today. And keep us posted. Thank you. We'll, we'll do it, Elizabeth. Thank you.